Oh, do you want to okay. go ahead? No, do you want to start now? Yeah, if he's ready to go. Yeah. Just okay. keep drinking. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, it's all right. Okay, some uh, logistics. You can stop me anytime if you have Yeah. Start. Some logistics before we get to um, what we're going to talk about today. Um, the embargo is not finalized yet. Mm -hmm. um, Brian will let you know by the end of the week. The okay. final date. Our target right now is September 22nd. That's next Tuesday. So, what we're here to introduce today are the first notebooks. That have been built for enthusiasts. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you know, we know that any product category that has a lot of passionate users tends to have enthusiasts, a, a class of users that are enthusiasts. Um, and you can see that, for example, for cars, this car enthusiast, and you see that with uh, audio equipment, you have audio equipment enthusiasts, um, you have wine enthusiasts, you can tell the you know, uh, subtle differences between wine and what they care about. This class of product users tends to be uh, very passionate about it, they tend to be very knowledgeable about it, they care deeply about the product, they're very opinionated, and they like to tinker with the product as well. And so we have, just like cars or audio equipment, we have PC enthusiasts. And uh, what PC enthusiasts care about are performance, first of all, they want extreme performance, uh, they want, some of them like to break records, but really all of them want higher performance out of their system. Um, and just like car enthusiasts or audio enthusiasts care about what components make up their system and what capabilities those components deliver, PC enthusiasts care about that too. Right? Um, and of course, the way PC enthusiasts tinker with their system is overclocking. You know, sometimes um, they break records by overclocking. Sometimes they just want to um, take something that has extreme performance and push it to the limit. So as we look at all of this and we said, we want to uh, build a class of notebooks for these enthusiasts. Um, the way we went about it was to deliver something that has never been seen in notebooks before, which was to take a flagship desktop GPU and put it in a notebook. What we're introducing today are these um, set of notebooks that are built for enthusiasts and they're powered by the desktop GTX 980. So this is the full desktop GTX 980 GPU. Um, this is not the 980M version? This is not the 980M version. Uh, this is the full 2048 core with the clocks and the performance and everything that goes with it. Uh, but it comes in the notebook. Um, so those of you who've been following uh, gaming notebooks, gaming notebooks have been transformed uh, significantly in the last three to four years. If you looked about four years ago, uh, when these were built, around GPUs uh, from a Fermi architecture. There used to be a niche market and uh, they tended to be a very small fraction of the performance what you'd see in a desktop. But since then, we've, we've introduced our Kepler and then our Maxwell architecture. Each of those architectures doubled the power efficiency. And what I mean is, for the same amount of power, they deliver twice the performance. So a 4x increase in power efficiency from Fermi has transformed that landscape. Now you can deliver. When we launched Maxwell, we talked about notebooks getting, you know, close to desktop kind of performance. And now what we can do is actually put a desktop GPU in a notebook. So what does that mean for performance? You know, we, we just took one of these notebooks, the Clevo is just over there, um, and opened it up out of the box, overclocked it a little bit, and it breaks the world record. Right? Of course, overclockers do all kinds of stunts on these, and they, they tinker around with this a lot. So when overclockers get their hands on these notebooks, they're going to see these records go to a new level. Uh, if you look at it, um, if you put aside the overclocking piece of it out of the box, um, they are about 35% faster than the fastest notebooks today, which are based on 980M. So 35% faster than 980M. That's quite a bit. Yeah. That, that's a huge bump up. Yeah. If you compare to 880M, which about a year ago was the fastest notebooks available, um, they're almost 2x higher performance. So almost twice the perf, uh, not quite two x, a little bit less. So if you just think about it from a capability of what you can do on a notebook, there's been huge changes. Let's talk about components a little bit. Um, starting with the GPU, of course. Um, so notebooks, as you know, are constrained. 
uh, thermally and that's what usually constrains their performance. So not every GTX 980 GPU can deliver that lack of performance in a notebook. So we use select GTX 980 GPUs in these notebooks. Something else that, that's a huge bump up from what's ever been possible on a notebook before. The fastest memory on a notebook before this was 5 Gbps, that's 5 gigabits per second. These notebooks come with 7 Gbps memory, a big bump up going from 5 to 7. Um, now you might go, well I've seen 7 Gbps memory on a desktop admin card before. It's not new, the memory itself is not new. The new thing here is um, notebooks by, by the nature of their form factor uh, have way less space for the graphics subsystem, right? Just because mm -hmm. the space is constrained. When you try to switch something this fast in that small a space, you have all kinds of interesting engineering challenges around crosstalk and noise and so on, because you have 256 bit wide memory that's all switching at extremely high rates. And that's why notebooks have not gone faster than 5 Gbps before this. Did you guys increase the memory bandwidth? Right, that's what this does. It, it, it increases the memory bandwidth from 5 gigahertz to 7 gigahertz for 256 bits wide. Okay. Going on to the phases of the power supplies. Um, before this, the maximum number of phases that you could find on a notebook are three phases on the 980M notebooks. All of these notebooks have at least four phases. Some of them have as many as eight phases. What that means is this, the power supply can deliver a lot more power to the GPUs to deliver the performance you need. And in addition, it's more efficient because when you have more phases for a given amount of power, it's more efficient. Hmm. And of course, from the power uh, subsystem, it's not just the number of phases. Every component in the power subsystem, even things passive like inductors or capacitors, they've all been selected to be able to sustain more than 50% higher peak current than was possible before. And the reason that's important is because that enables you to not only boost all the way, but to actually overclock. To be able to handle overclocking, you need to be able to manage higher peak. Now we talked about overclocking, all of these things help you with overclocking, but really you need to think of overclocking for the entire system. Um, so all of these notebooks, they ship with unlocked GPUs and unlocked CPUs, so overclockers can you know, have a field day, this you is guys, how hard they can push the CPUs and the GPUs. Do you guys partner with Intel or how, did you guys, how are you guys ensuring that well, the, so on the CPU Well, so the OEMs side? pick the CPUs, we recommend that they use okay. unlocked CPUs, but then uh, of course it's, it's up to them. Okay. But all of the notebooks that you see today have unlocked CPUs. Okay. Um, the enthusiast controls that enthusiasts are used to on desktop add-in cards, a lot of them are now available on notebook for the first time. So not only can you um, increase your core clock and memory clock offset, for the first time on a notebook, you can actually control the fan curve. I have a slide on this after this that sure. describes it. Um, the enthusiasts can also look at things like limit vectors to understand what is limiting the overclocking and then fine tune the overclocking based on that. So all of these things are available from NVIDIA as an API and then all of these tools like MSI, Afterburner and so on use these APIs to deliver. So I mean, I guess for the overclocking you just uh, ramp up the you know the fan RPM and then just, can you adjust the voltage too? No, there's no voltage adjust available on notebooks yet, but the fan RPM, yeah, I, I can have a slide that I can talk through. Okay. Okay. Um, the last point here is also very important. At the end of the day, performance on a notebook depends on the thermals. So all of these uh, notebooks deliver much better cooling than has been possible before. Uh, they take slightly different uh, methods to, to achieving that. Uh, some of them use the standard heat pipe and fan method, but they have innovations around the heat pipes to increase the cooling capacity. Um, the ASUS one that that you see here in front of you is actually water cooled. So different oh, wow. ways to make sure that you have uh, headroom for boosting and overclocking. Okay. So speaking of the fan control, um, you know, fans are controlled by this uh, what we call the fan curve, and that's actually simply what it is. It's for a, for a given temperature, it controls how fast your fan uh, goes. So it controls the fan speed and the RPM based on the temperature. It's just like a and, smart mode. Right. It, and okay. As the temperature goes up, the fan goes faster, right? Um, now what enthusiasts have enjoyed on, say, that desktop add-in cards 
is the ability to control this person. And that's a trade-off that they're making where they can go, you know, for a given temperature, I actually want the fan speed to be higher. And I know that I'm trading off a little bit more noise, but I'm getting more performance in exchange. So that's a conscious trade-off that I want to have control over. Now this has never been possible on notebooks before because the challenge on notebooks is the fan is not just cooling this GPU. It's cooling the entire system, which includes other sources of heat, like say the CPU. So we work with our OEM partners to deliver fan, fan curve control for the first time on notebooks. So the example you see here is the UI from Clevo that shows not just a core clock or memory clock offset, but also a fan speed up. Okay, so with all of these overclocking features, naturally, you see the kind of overclocking that we've never seen on notebooks before. Uh, the example here was the MSI GT72, right out of the box, uh, no starts here, just kind of turning up the clocks to see how fast it goes. Um, and we were able to overclock that one up to 1460 on the core clock and 7.6 GBPS on the memory. I'm guessing you want to, uh, when you're recommending people to overclock or allowing people to overclock, this is when they plug the laptop in. I'm, I'm guessing you don't, you probably don't want to overclock your system when it's running on battery. Yeah, so I mean, you would recommend you plug it in. <laughs> we, we don't stop you from overclocking when you're on battery. Yeah, just uh, that probably drains the battery much the faster. performance on battery is always lower than performance when you're plugged in. Sure. Uh, so it may not make as much sense to overclock when you're on battery. Yeah. And of course, you don't need to overclock to enjoy games on these notebooks. So the performance numbers you see here are not overclocked. And you can see all the latest games, even something as intensive as Witcher, run more than 60 frames per second. This is 1080p ultra with all the settings turned up. Cool. So with, with all of this horsepower, another thing that you've not been able to do before that you can do now is surround gaming on a notebook. Now you could connect up monitors before, but to be able to drive 6 million pixels, which is what it would take if you put three 1080p panels in surround mode, um, needs the kind of horsepower that finally these notebooks deliver. And the ability to deliver 6 million pixels can actually be enjoyed in different ways. Surround gaming is a great way to enjoy it, and Matt will show you it soon. But you can use DSR. Are you familiar with DSR? Um, I'm forgetting what it is off the top of my head. Yeah, we introduced this feature. Oh, it's the, 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 the resolution platform. scaling thing, That's right? right? Yeah. Dynamic super resolution. And what it does is it enables you, um, and GeForce Experience will set the right settings based on optimal for the game. Um, it enables you to render at a higher resolution. Mm -hmm. So you get uh, all the benefits of rendering at a higher resolution, and then intelligently scale it down to the resolution of your fan. So if you have a 1080p fan, you still get much better image quality. So you can enjoy um, the ability to drive so many pixels with DSR, with surround gaming, and some of these notebooks, the Asus and the Clevo, will also ship with higher resolution fans, which will be another way to enjoy it on a different fan. We'll take a break here and then uh, check out a demo. Sure. And we'll come back to a few more slides. Sounds good.